and thank you for joining us for this week's this week's Ask Joe. Uh, our topic this week is on Layout Pro. And uh, Layout Pro, if you're not 100% familiar with it, is a program that's primarily used for laying out foundations. The uh, foundation that you can input or the plan that you can input can do either a digital input, DXF or a drawing file of that nature, or you can manually input it if all you have is the blueprint and the hood of your truck. It's utilizing the plan uh, as a shape, so it's working off of that figure, which is why it's very good for foundation work. The uh, program is a very simple, can be a one-person method, and it's been proven and accepted industry-wide. So it's something that uh, can definitely help out in uh, your processes with not only the uh, picking up the, the productivity, but also the accuracy of your projects. So presenting today is Joe Sass. Uh, after the presentation, please ask Joe your questions about Layout Pro. Uh, anything to do with the uh, program, how to do something, best practices, et cetera, for using it, any concerns you may have if you are using it. A little background on Joe. Uh, Joe is our channel development manager, is his title. And basically, that's uh, either the go between for us between the field application engineer and the liaison with the product marketing and the sales and engineering teams. He's got a degree in geography, uh, which blends really nicely with his passion for land surveying and construction. He also has been, uh, since 98, active with the California Land Surveyors Association, and in 2004 became the representative with the RTCM Standards Organization, and he currently sits on the board of directors for that. So with that, I will turn this over to uh, Joe Sass and ask Joe questions at the end. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I trust you can hear me. It's so bizarre to hear an introduction of yourself from someone like that. Thank you. And in case you guys don't know, that's Joe Binder that's doing the introduction. Thank you for your help uh, with all of these sessions as well. And before we go too much further, I'm going to turn off my webcam. I just put that on there to make sure you guys know I'm a, a live person and not a robot. So Joe did a nice introduction to Layout Pro. Layout Pro does a lot. And it can serve a lot of different vertical markets, but I would uh, venture to say it's, it's aimed squarely at the concrete contractor and laying out forms for uh, these people. Interesting, when I get into this, uh, my pointer never works. So over here on the left, you can see these cement forms that are laid out. Most of these forms uh, today in the industry worldwide are pulled by two tape measures. And uh, you pull a tape measure from one point that you know, and you pull a tape measure from another point that you know, and that point of intersection between the two tape measures is where your form goes. And so people are, uh, cement contractors are very familiar with this technique, um, but it's labor intensive. And uh, Layout Pro offers a nice scaled solution for them. Uh, we can, in fact, use the two tape measure with this software. So if they just wanted, for instance, to buy the software itself, wouldn't make a lot of sense, but it would still support their traditional methods today. Uh, it can be, you know, it's aimed at concrete contractors, but it can be used. We have a lot of people using it, especially in the landscaping business, it can be used in the electrical uh, installation, mechanical, HVAC. Uh, there's a lot of different industries that this uh, product serves. Um, and really, you know, when you start getting into these contractor type businesses, um, these two things are really key, accuracy and ease of use. These people are not computer experts. They're used to working with their hands and pulling tape measures and, and they have calluses and, and you, you start talking about computer programs and, and they don't really um, warm to that immediately until they see how effective and efficient it is. I've got this worksheet here, and I debated uh, pulling it up in front of you because I'm not sure who everybody is in this audience, but I decided, and when I say that, I mean that we have both dealers, our, our distribution partners, and we also invited end users uh, to, this, um, to these sessions because it's, it's information that's, that's worth hearing, I think. Um, and I, I wondered if I should pull up this spreadsheet, and I ended up deciding, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up. And I just want to highlight a few things. So this is a, a return on investment analysis, and right here are the customer inputs. And 
estimating 240 work days a year, charging for a two person crew $200, how that's broken up in, in this per presentation here, probably 100% or 95% instead of this breakdown between topo and control. It's, this, this product is really aimed at construction staking. So anyhow, looking through the, the yearly, yearly billing potentials and how they break out, and then how you pay your people. Is this what you pay the lead man and this what you pay the operator? This is particularly interesting because as these numbers, these numbers look very low to me. Um, and you may or may not agree with that comment, but as these numbers get higher, the return on investment gets higher. So just remember how low these are, and then I'll cite what I, what I did with these earlier and what the numbers change to, and you can actually see that if you want. So let's say that we agree that these numbers are reasonable, what does that mean as far as a robotic total station running layout pro, right? So at the bottom of it is this $111,000 in additional billings or additional savings over the life of the instrument, right? So $111,000 certainly is a lot more than the cost of the system. And look what we've got here is, is the life of the instrument, which is ridiculous. This instrument is not going to last one year. You know, let's let's be conservative and say it lasts five years. What does that do to that number? All of a sudden, your initial investment is turned into a half a million dollars. And let's go let's go back over here and let's say now these numbers are wrong. I'm going to pay my lead guy fifty dollars an hour, and I'm going to pay the rod man forty dollars an hour. There, if there is a second guy, because you may not need a second person, uh, because this system run robotically is a one man solution, or it can be. Look at all of a sudden what happens to your investment. You make even more money uh, or, or savings or potential billings. Uh, so really when it comes to a return on investment, this is a no brainer. Um, the big hurdle is just to convince them uh, to go digital, really, because right now they're living in an analog world. So the main use of this is to lay out points. The program does all of this other stuff that you see here on the right. And I don't really talk about that uh, because this is not the primary use. Although I will say that laying out arcs is something that most concrete contractors today can't really do. They kind of fake it. And I'll show you how, how easy it is to do arcs inside this inside the software. Most contractors are not asking for an out of tolerance report, but we can do it or a deviation of the data that was actually staked, the as stake versus the design. We can do all of those things, but really the, the point of today is to show you how it's used to lay out points. Right? That's, that's, that's the message. Um, this is a 3D program. It can, it can lay out in 3D, but experts in this business that know a lot more about concrete, especially than I do, say that lasers are, are faster, better, easier, so typically this, this product is used in 2D and uh, the elevation is obtained from lasers. We, I'm only going to talk about the Focus 35. Focus 35 is my robotic total station. It offers the ability to do a one-man solution. Um, this software does support manual total stations like the Nikon and the Focus brand of, of mechanical total stations. To me, with the return on investment so high and the potential for one-man operation uh, given, I think that the robot makes the best commercial argument, um, but it certainly will work with others, but I'm going to confine my, my discussions today to the robotic solution. As you can see here, we can hook up uh, via radio, Bluetooth, or a cable if we were not going robotic. Um, this Bluetooth is interesting. We're, we're trying to find ways to go long range Bluetooth. Most concrete contractors are not going more than three or 400 feet away from their instrument. So we're working on that. I've had some help from some of our dealers on that. One of our dealers, thank you, Dan. So here you can see that there are, besides my own brand of instruments in the Trimble Mechanical Series, we support some of those legacy top gun like SOP and NTAX instruments as well. Manual mode, manual tool 
Hey, Joe, I think we may have lost you. Your audio settings? It means you're going to manually input your, your uh, slope distances and angles. Joe, Excuse I don't me? know if you can hear me now, but we lost you uh, audibly there Did for someone a say little something? bit. So. Yes, I am. We had lost your your audio for a while. I don't know. Uh, if where did you lose me? Uh, just when you were talking about the manual input. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Are you hearing me now? So yes. What I said about manual is that this means you can hear me. Yes. Correct. Yes. I'm confused. Okay. So just manual mode. As seen at the top just means that I'm going to manually input my horizontal vertical angles and my slope distance, which again is not practical, but we do allow you to key in uh, so that you can simulate being connected to an instrument. Joe Binder made this comment earlier, and I totally agree. We're turning their analog world, working with blueprints on top of the hood of their car, and we're allowing them to take these pieces of paper and digitize them, um, and not in a scanner sense, but in a layout sense. And that's why this product is called Layout Pro. And this, this plan has a lot of information, and they don't need it all. They only need portions of it, and that's what we allow them to extract. And as I mentioned earlier, we do support this traditional method. So if they wanted to just buy the software and install it on their laptop, they could do that and still use the product with the two tape layout um, option. I think this is probably only used when the total station is out someplace, they've got the software and they need to lay out one or two points. This is not a productive method, but this is what they're doing today. Estimates about the increases in productivity uh, range from a doubling of productivity up to an 80, 90% increase in productivity. One contractor mentioned to me that they could do four house forms a week or a day and when they bought the system they went up to five or six so they increased their productivity by 25 percent overnight um, typical training for this product is 45 minutes to an hour and a half it's not that complicated to get someone up and running <laughs> Our sales manager, Andy Fiore, is the first one that showed me this. And it's, it's a simple question about this inside bar. Clearly, the side of this bar looks darker, and clearly, the side of the bar looks lighter. But if we surround it by white, we see that the bar is the same color throughout, and it was the background that changed. And the point here is that sometimes we have to look at our business differently. If you're a dealer of ours, and you're used to selling the survey brand of products, this is not a survey, this is a construction product. If you're a constructionist and you're on the phone um, and you're doing the two tape layout or you've got a market of people around you that are using two tape layout methods, this is a, 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 a I used the expression earlier, no brainer. We have to see the market differently. If we're used to being in an analog world, we have to think about being in a digital world. If we're thinking about survey sales, we might have to think about construction sales in a different way. And that's that's the whole point here. So there are two pieces of the Layout Pro solution. Uh, one begins in the office, where you have a very complicated AutoCAD drawing, and the other part is the field. And, and you don't need the office software. It's, it's a nice addition. It's, it's a tool to archive. It's a tool that allows you more screen real estate. Um, the functionality is, is modestly improved in the office, but not very much. I think everything you can do in the office, you can pretty much do in the field. It's basic site lay layout. It can do very complex, complicated, and, and we've seen it. Um, but the software remains easy. So these people are not measurement specialists, as I said. They're used to working with their hands. They're, they're, they're used to building, not positioning. And I think that for someone like me who lives in the positioning domain, and I don't work with my hands very much, I'm exactly the opposite. 
We also see in these industries, uh, these construction businesses, that there's a high employee turnover. So it really comes back to having to have to be easy. It cannot be complicated. We're seeing productivity increases as, uh, increases, as I said. And in the right situation, you can pay yourself back on this, on this equipment in two weeks versus the, with, the, with the productivity gains versus the initial outlay of the cost of the instrument. Just on that note, I think that many times our dealers have access to, to good um, financing programs related to these types of products as well. So the plan, it has a lot of information on it. It, it deals with a lot more than just the construction or the, the concrete forms on the, on the ground. There's electrical information and, and plumbing and HVAC and, and a lot of other things I'm not aware of. Uh, the plans are usually a stack of plans. And yet really all the concrete contractor needs is this information. He doesn't need all that other. And the office software and the field software, but the office software especially is really nice to be able to strip away those layers that we're not interested in, leaving the layers that we are interested in, right? And then just take, take that information now that we've extracted from the plan and wrap a really nice looking, easy to use software around it. You've got Layout Pro and that's what this software is. And right here, you're looking at a screen capture of the field software. With that being said, let's launch into just an overview of the office software. So here you can see on, on the diagram, we've got a lot of information on this plan. And yet really all the cement contractor, probably cement concrete contractor, uh, probably all he's interested in are these yellow boxes because those are the, the footprints of the homes that are going to be built in this development. So Layout Pro supports both DXF and DWG file formats, meaning you can bring these files into your job and you can create points. Remember I said the main purpose of this, of this uh, software is to lay out points, not lines. So when we get a DXF or a DWG file into our software, typically we're going to use the vertices or certain segmentations and create points on those lines that we can then lay out in the field. So here you can see an AutoCAD file and using the tools within the software, the office software, I was able to go and create points from these polygons and the points will be what I lay out in the field. Maybe a little bit closer up there. The field and the office software are just about identical in the manual input of the plan. And here you've got the footprint of a typical house in some typical neighborhood. Um, these arcs right here, they are very difficult for today's concrete constructionists to build. They kind of fake it in. They know what this distance is. They know, you know that this is supposed to be three or four feet out. They kind of fake in these points around it and do the best that they can. Same, same down here. And I'm going to show you how the software is really a nice answer for them in this regard. Also common to every construction site a, a concrete contractor goes out to are control points on the ground. And in this case, we've got points one and two that are going to be the control and the basis for which this entire house is defined. The house is probably defined by some offset from these control points. Um, defining points three and four in the, in the software allows us to calculate that and then graphically present it. So as I said, we've got points one and two, and, and this point down here is defined by an offset from point number one. And so our point one to two, we've got a down and out. And if you're in the land of surveyors, they don't use the term down and out, but in the land of construction, concrete constructions, that's their language. They use down and out, meaning in the direction of the arrow and left or right, right? So this is a down and out and the out is minus two meters. So this point here is zero down because it's right perpendicular to point number one and it's got a minus, the minus meaning it's left on the number line. And you can see clearly the arrow going this way, this is left of the uh, number line. So we're two meters offset at zero meters down the line. 
We create that point, and we will then have point number three created. So we know that this other corner of the house is defined as from the down and out from point number two. Right, so the down is 10 meters. We know that one to two is 10 meters. And we again have the out of minus two meters, and it will give it the point number four. And we've established the side of our house, right? So now we, we simply get to connect dots, right? And the dots are connected with lines. The lines make it, make it more visually attractive. The reality of it is that the contractor is only going to be interested in point three or point four and have very little interest in the space in between that. There are exceptions to that, especially in tilt-up concrete where you've got you know, hundreds of meters. A lot of times they want to do segments along the line, and we certainly support that, but I would say that's exceptional and not the rule. Excuse me, I need to take a drink. So we're going to graph ourselves around this. Here you can see point number four is the point of beginning here. We're going to go a horizontal distance of 3.5 units, meters in this case, and we're going to go at a 270 degrees. Now, I don't need to know that that's 270 degrees. As a you know, positioning person, I, I know that on a compass that represents 270 degrees, but I can hit these buttons, and these buttons simply increment by 90 degrees, and that's all that was done to create that connection in that direction. This button right here was hit, direction to the left and that makes the, the line go to the left and we create the point the line between points four and five and you can see here we've got horizontal distance again in the same direction but let me back up and see if you caught that we're entering a line between five and the next point it will become point number six but we want to create an arc now, we know this by pulling it off the plan. We also know this radius point. We didn't know how to compute these other ones. And Layout Pro allows me to define this arc. So I've got a radius of 1.5, which I pulled off the plan. And I know that I want to use my bender board and I want to have four stakes in the ground to define this arc so that I can bend my board around it. And this is revolutionary for a, for a guy coming from the analog world into the digital world. Oh, I can do arcs. I can really do arcs. Okay, I can create points on those arcs. And again, they don't really care about the line. They don't care about the red line. They don't care about the line between point five and six. They care about points five, seven, eight, nine, ten. So actually, because they don't care about this, I'm going to go in and delete this line. So I get a nice, pretty picture, so to speak. And I just keep on continuing to work my way around the house, defining using this turn right or turn left command, distance, let survey, uh, let layout pro take care of the point numbering for me, automatically creates point number 10. And I work my way around the house again, just using these simple definitions. I use this right turn, uh, right turn button to get going north again, left button, east or west, I mean and I just work my way around the house. This process of pulling the information off of a plan and inputting it into the office software, is, or into the office or the field software, it happens to be the office software I'm showing you now, but it could be the field software on top of the hood of the truck, is usually about a 15 minute process. Um, this, is, this is revolutionary again for the person, they're used to pulling these off, but then they have to figure out how to lay it out. And typically, they're going to have to lay it out in the same way I built the house. They're going to have to go from point three to point four, pull tapes to find point five, pull tape to find point six. They're going to work their way around here, pulling tapes to understand the, the right angles. And the right angles, as you all know in construction, are not right angles. Uh, this software allows you to get a lot closer to that 90 degrees uh, when that's what you're trying to get. Another thing about this is that uh when you when you understand as either an end user or as a as a salesperson trying to promote this product that i can set my total station up anywhere i don't have to set it up on point one and back and, and reference point two i can set it up here in the middle and from a single setup i can capture all these points again this is not something a construction guy is used to knowing or, or being able to do as i said they're used to working their way around there 
And the fact that they could measure point 11 and then measure point four and then measure point 16 is, is breaking their paradigm of the way they think about a, a construction site for about five minutes, but then they really embrace that. Wow, from a single setup, I can do all of this? That's time savings. Okay, so we're going to finish our way around this house by using the uh, enter line command to create these points. And all of these data uh, points were pulled off the, the paper plan. And here again, I'm inputting a radius that had the dimensions and had the parameters on the plan, but in the past, I never really knew how to find this radius point, right? It's somewhere offset from point 24 here. Some, again, they'd have to pull tape from both three and 25 to find that radius point at that point of intersection and then kind of fake in the rest of these and, and hope for the best. So that's been the current plan. This plan is finished. All of the points are now ready uh, to be staked out in the field. So we take it out to the field, and this is the field software. The field software is standalone. As I mentioned earlier, the Office software is not required. A lot of people like the Office software uh, because it's a nice, convenient place to archive data. Typically, it's on the internet all the time, so you can hook it up with things like Google or, or Dropbox and have your data. Uh, backed up to the cloud. There's a lot of advantages to the Office software, but functionally, the field software does just about everything as well, uh, just in a, in a slightly different layouts. As I said here, uh, Windows 10 or Windows Embedded Handheld, so we're supporting that Windows CE generation. Uh, increasingly, though, uh, this is being paired up with a, with a Windows 10 tablet. There's not a big, compelling need for a keyboard with this product. And so having all of that real estate that, a, that just a flat tablet like the Spectra ST10 provides is a really nice solution. The ST10 tablet, by the way, it's a, what a 10 inch tablet, but it's got the integrated radio that then can communicate with the Focus 35 and allow you to get you know 400 meters away from the instrument. Uh, the Everything here that is on this page is really nice except maybe the quality control. While we provide millimeter type answers, millimeter level answers, from what I understand with most contractors, they don't save anything. They just hit the back button. Um, I'm not sure why, but, but having data that can be verified, printing reports, generating deviations are important to a, a small percentage of the contractors out there. Um, mostly they're interested in the productivity gains of the software. So here's the job. This is on my, my tablet. So this is on a Ranger 7, which is a, it's a Windows 10 device that also has a keyboard. It's, it's like a tablet. Uh, you can look it up on the internet if you want to know more about that. You can define what you're going to see, whether or not you want to see the lines or the points uh, through this uh, descript, one, two, three descript button. Uh, and again, as I say, the input plan is nearly identical to the Office software, which I just showed you. This is just a confirmation page showing me uh, when I imported the job and where it's at. This is a deviation report. So these, if I save my observations, which in this case I did, uh, a flag is put on the point to let me know that I actually did lay out that point. And once I've laid it out, I can then generate this, uh, these reports, stakeout. This is the stakeout report here, and then right next to it is the deviation report showing the deviation designed versus observed. Uh, in this case, I did set up on my control point and reference my control point, but there was no necessity to do that. So you open or you create the job on the data collector either one. This is a CAD drawing that's got um, the points that I are, I'm interested in. And a lot of times the construction sites are laid out with these grid lines. Uh, and the grid lines typically control my, uh, contain my or possess my control points that are actually on the ground on the site. So that's why I've left this layer visible. I can hide or uh, show uh, any of the AutoCAD layers. Sometimes these AutoCAD drawings have 100 layers 
and you're interested in three of them. So you can go in using the layer manager and you can hide those. Um, and you can also generate points at the, at the uh, places that you're interested on the drawing. Here, we're going to connect to Focus 30 or Focus 35 by radio. Down here, I've also got other uh, parameters such as the meters or feet and how many digits, et cetera. So here, create reference points. This is where I, again, these grid lines are where my actual, I don't know where my, my control points in the ground are until I'm out on the site. And once I locate them, then I can use these AutoCAD tools to create points uh, inside my file so that I can uh, occupy my total station and I can reference it to another point in the job. So here you've got some visual graphics showing you the instrument is set up over this control point and it has referenced this control point and now I'm ready to go and lay out these points inside my job. Layout Pro provides the user with a couple of details here. Um, so you can see back, meaning from, uh, I need to move away from the instrument by one foot, one inch. A lot of times, again, this is probably um, not familiar to surveyors in the audience who may, may understand that concrete contractors typically use imperial units, inches and feet. And so that's what I'm showing here is that we can, break up the inch down to, I think, 64 base. So certainly uh, more um, decimation than, than is typically required. So here I need to go right, as I'm facing the instrument, I need to go right 10 feet, one inch, and I need to go back one foot, one inch. So this is where I'm at right here. This is the line that the instrument is pointing at, and this is my, my target. This is where I need to get to. And you can see that I've already staked out this point. So this was probably the previous point I staked out. And as I started looking for this point, I went in the wrong direction. And, and the instrument says, no, 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 no. Come back Joe, this your computer audio so, is gone again. And providing these directions in real time, this Oh my goodness, what's going on? Can you hear me? No, you're, you're back now. I'm back. So how much did you miss? I'm not sure Just why. Just a moment or two. Okay, thank you for jumping in like that and letting me know because I can hear you perfectly. So just to reiterate the last comment I made, the instrument is updating its position, the rod position 100 times per second. So you can literally, faster than you can walk to the point, the instrument can tell you how to get there. And this is, uh, this is the productivity gain that is immense when you compare it to the traditional techniques being used by most concrete contractors today. So, with that being said, as I mentioned earlier, the software can do a lot more than I talk about. But I've talked about the, the main points. And um, in my experience, to get someone to be interested in this product requires two things. It requires someone in front of you that's interested in listening, and they need to be able to listen for about five minutes. That's about all it takes um, to convince someone about the, the um, efficiency, productivity gains, and worthwhileness, if that's a word. So I thank you. For your time, as I've mentioned in previous webinars, um, I present until I'm done and it doesn't have to occupy the whole hour. Uh, I will tell you that I've got a couple of sessions coming up that will consume the whole hour, but this was not one of them. And at this point, we'll open it up for any questions or comments. I know that in the audience, I actually have people that know this product better than I. We were looking at the list of attendees uh, just before we opened up the seminar. Uh, so, if I can't answer it, there's someone online that can. So, Joe, we have had a few co uh, questions come in that uh, I have answered uh, uh, on the computer here. But there's one question about cropping a DXF file in Layout Pro Office to make it smaller, as well as 
getting the office job imported directly to the field controller. So, here you can see on, on one computer, I've got both the field software, which is this top one, and the office software, which I will open right now. What is my existing job, first or second? Not even sure what's there is nothing in here. Um, for the CAD file, I hope. So here I've got an AutoCAD file. And the question is, can I only send out part of this, right? Yeah, can you crop it? I don't believe I can. If I... I know that we can control layers, an area that we uh, generate points. Right, so let's see if I could delete these points. Yeah, so that, I, what Joe Binder just said, you know, I can't delete multiple points. Uh, Well, we may be able to answer two questions at once. This one, which I know we can do some layering and, and areas with creating points. We had uh, another question come in. Somebody would like to see how you create points off of the DXF file. So this might answer okay. both those at once. I was just seeing if I had some choices on the actual save, if I could save just the screen. And so right here, if I say X, uh, Spectra Layout Pro, say yes, this is going to actually look for a data collector on my USB. So the other part of that question was, can I take it directly from the office to the field? This is the method to do that. You can also save the file as, and then just manually copy it to your data collector, uh, whether that be another computer or a, a Ranger 3 Windows CE type device. But obviously, I don't have anything hooked up right now, so that's not working. That is in my presentation back here, um, right here. This was actually how I got that job, was doing the browse. I had my data collector, my Ranger 7 hooked up with a special cable to my computer, and I exported it using that browse button. Um, let me, let me uh, create a new job. I'll call this third. I'm very creative in my names. Uh, here, I'm given the choice of what I want to work in. If I use survey feet, it's going to give me tenths of a foot. If I use feet, it's going to give me inches. Right here, I can browse for my CAD file. You saw also I can bring it in over here, file, import CAD. Go here, I'll find a CAD file to bring in. Um, I have no idea what these these are. Error was accounted in. Okay, well that didn't work. Let's try it again. As I told you, I'm not sure what these. It's a, this is, I think, a very large CAD file. Very large. I don't think it should take that long, though. Okay, got it. Let's try one more time, guys, and then I'm going to have to admit defeat. Um, so 
I am running a beta version of the software. That's going to be my claim here at least. Uh, the truth is I am running beta software that's being tested for release. And we may have found an issue on a live demo right now. Part of it is my uh, lack of understanding what's inside these files. I've just got a folder that I've collected DXF files into. I think we knew that, people. Let me try one more time with that other file that I brought in earlier. This one seemed to have come in fine. Well, it's got point number one down here. I'm going to delete point number one. And now when I say zoom extents, it should bring me in. Um, let me zoom in here. Zoom in here. So, CAD file, create points from CAD. Why? I should be able to do that here, and I'm not sure it could be because I've already done that here. Create points from CAD is, is where I want to be. I, I, I'm, I don't know. Can someone help me out there? Easier. Well, so what you my intersection. So if here. you go right there, I've created, I've used these snaps up here. So this was the intersection. I want to get the two ends of an arc. Well, Joe, what we're looking to do is take this and create the points off of the DXF. So I believe if you go to plan. Yes. See the plan or can filed. Uh, put out points uh, without driving this is hard. Go over to the CAD file one, no. please. Uh, right nope, here, so go back right, to plan. Right here, create points from CAD yeah, file. create points. I think what happened Correct. is that I used this file before and I created all the points possible. Well, go down to the inner arc there where you have the, uh, just below there, close that. If you don't want to enter an arc, go up. up. I'm sorry. Are you, close, you close the inter arc where it says blue. Okay. The, there you go. Okay. okay, now go back and try to just create a point. I can enter points, right? No, not an offset. In input edit points, go, right? Go, here. go, go back to the go back to the CAD file. And uh, it's still uh, not allowing me to do that. Right. I, so, again, I think uh, I created all the points I can. There, there are no more points to create in this file. Everything has already been. So to answer right? the question for you. Um, uh, I think it was uh, Bryce, Brian there was asking the question. When you go into create, it will give you that uh, the, a snap feature where you can create off of midpoints, a, a corner, uh, any intersection. As you go along, it will snap to those points on the DXF file, and you just simply say create a point. You can do it one at a time. You can also window in an area and do everything within an area of a window. Keep in mind, if you do that route, you'll want to be cautious of your layers. For example, if you have annotation on, it will actually create a point on each of the indices, the endpoints of, a, of a, a letter, for example. So if you have A, you're going to get the two bottoms of the A, the intersections across the line, and the, uh, the apex at the top of the A. So uh, you just want to confirm if you're doing it by layer and, and uh, selecting everything that you have the correct layers on. So it can be done either in the office software or in the field. So if you have that DXF file on a thumb drive and you want to put that into your controller in the field, you can create those points quickly and easily right there in the data collector as well. So here again. Uh, another question. Biggest file size the software can handle. Um, I'm not sure if there's a limit on that. Uh, Joe, are you aware of a file size limit? I would think that's going to be more related to the uh, PC and the processor itself. 
I know of no hard limit. I mean, I don't think that we, we intentionally built limits in there. There always are, but I don't know what that is. Input at points. Let's get rid of 402. Delete. No, this is that. So maybe I can delete point number 129. So point 129 has been deleted. If I come up here and I want to no, I still don't have the ability to create the points from CAD. I'm not sure why. And again, I'm going to claim that it's because I'm running a beta version of software. All right. Sorry about that uh, as far as showing you, but uh, hopefully you get the idea there. Uh, another question that did come up is regarding a Ranger 7 to the to a PC USB cable. And the Ranger 7 is actually a Windows 10 computer. So things aren't gonna connect like you normally would utilizing a uh, like the, the old Windows Mobile Device Center. Uh, this is actually a Windows 10 computer on its own. So you would just transfer the files, whether it be via a, an email, a USB stick, et cetera. Uh, but there is no PC cable, if you would, between the two. Well, uh, there is. We just don't sell. There is, okay. Um, I've, I'm looking at one right now. It's got the name Ugreen on it, but it is USB to USB, and it's got a, a big USB connector on one side that actually handles the drivers to make the two computers connect. Okay. Do you know where you got that? Uh, I bought it through Amazon, obviously. Okay. What about uh, the latest versions of Autodesk that we will accept? I don't know the answer to that. Get I don't know the answer to this one first. If Jeff Blanton is on the line, maybe he would know. Uh, Terry, I do know on that, that uh, from what I understand, we are able to take in the newest versions with this latest update that came out. Let's see if there's any other questions that have come up. new computer so I don't have any of my archives here. Or maybe I do. Nope. Any more? Questions that I can't answer? None others have come up. So I've got a few uh, to some individuals that uh, I will uh, confirm and get back to that are more individual questions. Um, if there are no others at this time, uh, we appreciate your time and uh, your interest in Layout Pro, and if there's anything further, feel free to reach out to uh, either Joe Sass or myself, and we will be happy to help you out as best we can. And you can reach us at Joe underscore Binder at SpectrePrecision.com or Joe underscore Sass at SpectrePrecision.com. Thank you much, and have a good week. We'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye.